Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. You are quietly studying at your desk, when the teacher explodes in front of you and now all the students will be forced to participate in terrible games of life and death. Today we will recap the story of the 2014 live action, as the gods will. We follow the journey of Shun Takahata, a typical teenager who is bored with everything around him, and although he has friends who care about him, like Satake and Ichika, he has spent weeks not going to school playing video games, but by questioning God about how boring his existence is, the plans of the universe changed. Everything seemed normal that day in class, except for the fact that Shun was present. While the teacher was writing on the blackboard and explaining the subject, his head suddenly exploded. Revealing in its place a traditional Daruma doll, this doll represents a Buddhist monk who reached his enlightenment after meditating for nine years. The staples on his face refer to the legend that he cut off his own eyelids so he would never sleep, and his limbs atrophied from years of not moving during meditation. When you get a Daruma doll you can make a wish by painting its eyes. But unlike the legend, this Daruma here is not a nice god at all. The students who got scared and tried to run while the doll was watching them, had their heads blown to pieces. The challenge has begun, the game Daruma Sanga Karanda. The students noticed that they had to remain static and could only move while the doll's back was turned. Saying the phrase Daruma Sanga Karanda. They still didn't understand what the objective was to win the game, and until then, because they were terrified, some ended up dead by moving or screaming. It is at that moment that Shun pleads with God that he would like his boring life back. Another factor that is messing with the students are these little balls. Every time Daruma kills someone he sprays little red balls all over the room, which makes the floor totally slippery. Some tried to escape through the door, but everything was locked and don't think they could break the windows, the classroom has gained a kind of invisible armor, only the winner will come out. Satake asked everyone to stay calm. He understood the concept of this death game. They probably just needed to press the button on Daruma's back. That's when a student made the big mistake of running up to the doll. Obviously the doll heard him and turned around quickly. His strategy is this, to slowly hum the phrase, but when he realizes that the students are getting closer he speeds up the phrase and turns around. To make things a little more difficult, only now they have noticed that there is a timer on top of the button, so there is only a little more than one minute to complete the challenge, and if not, you will all surely be killed. Without any strategy more students tried to approach and ended up dead, much to Daruma's delight. Look at all the little balls covering the floor. Now it will be insane to finish the game. There are only two players, Satake and Shun. We have reached the final 30 seconds. And Satake has a risky idea, it will be the last card up his sleeve. He will serve as a support for Shun to jump over the bodies and balls and hit the button. Shun was reluctant, but the final 5 seconds forced him to stick to his plan. He gave Satake the boost and literally flew into Daruma. And it worked. He pushed the button and crashed into the doll. Daruma stood up and started shouting game over several times. His friends celebrated, for they had survived this deadly game. Hitaki gives Shun a big thumbs up. Only his head exploded. But why did this happen? Demura explained that the only winner was Shun, because he was the one who pushed the button, so he will live. The doll finished with just one last explanation. Which in fact doesn't help at all. He says that now Shun is a mouse and the cat is coming. At that moment the door is opened, it was Ichika. She had survived the game in her class. Shun runs to her and the two try to use the cell phone to call the police, but there is no signal. Daruma takes the opportunity again to say that the cat was coming. Shun and Ichika escape from there and go down a flight of stairs to an exit. Remember I said about the invisible armor. Shun tries to break the glass with a fire extinguisher, but it is in vain. There really is no way to escape from that place. Now he wandered toward the gymnasium and the door was open. Upon entering they find several other students, some of whom are wearing mouse costumes. And on the floor is written, hit the cat bell so it's over. Now Daruma's lines make more sense. But where would the cat be? That's when the floor of the court begins to open up. A huge Maneki Neko comes out of this hole and stands still. This kitten is very traditional in Japanese culture. It is nothing more than a kitten that brings good luck to its owner. But not here in this game. The giant head stretches out with a spring and snatches up the first student dressed as a mouse. Then the rush through the gym begins. Maneki is very fast and goes out devouring several students in costume. Ichika and Shun saw a ball in the shape of those little cat bells. And there really was a basketball right in Maneki's neck. There were nine and a half minutes left to basket the little bell. Shun let everyone know what the goal was. And Kikawa asked them to pass the ball to him. His whole life was a training to face that exact moment. He trained 500 throws every day and was an expert at it. When throwing the bell, the movement was perfect. Everything would be fine, if it were not for the cat holding the bell with his hands. 
There's even more. He blocks the throw. The cat strikes Kikawa so hard that it knocks him off the concrete wall. Since that huge robot was only hunting the guys in rat costumes, Shun obviously noticed and shouted at them to remove the costumes. It seemed to have worked. But that was just shooting themselves in the foot. Because Maneki fed on them again, and now, it didn't matter if they had rat costumes. The creature started using the coin to kill its victims, and when it went to grab Ichika, Shun appeared dressed as a crazy mouse, yelling for Maneki to catch him. He dodged several of the cat's attacks, yelling for the crowd to throw the ball while he distracted the cat. But then suddenly something happens. Shun is listening to the cat whispering a sentence. Maneki is saying my back itches, my back itches. Only Shun is hearing this. The explanation is simple, it is the costume's ears that allow it to translate the cat's meowing. That was a clue that only the mice could hear. Knowing this, he turns the satanic cat around and climbs onto its back, holding a rope he starts scratching madly at the cat's back. Maneki is getting very happy. But he is asking for more and more. Just one person was not enough. So Ichika and the guys get together to help Shun in this mission. Even using brooms, they scratch the cat's back non-stop. Maneki fell asleep. This was the right strategy. Now all he had to do was throw the bell around the neck rim. Only it became an argument between them, because they thought that it could be like the previous challenge, and only the person who hit the bell would win the game. With the noise of the general fight to see who would throw the ball, the cat woke up. And gently used a new skill. To slice the students with his deadly claws. That face of Shun's, there comes another plan. He sees a cut basketball and comes up with that light bulb in his head. He takes the bell, the torn ball, calls Ichika and runs to the equipment room. The cat confirms that the bell was thrown through its eyes. But if you can delay that indentification, you have a 50% chance. One of the cloths has the bell, the other has an ordinary ball. Shun and Ichika run in opposite directions. The cat observes that it was a basketball that Shun was carrying, the idiot unintentionally revealed. So the bell would be with Ichika. She tries to throw it first, and the cat immediately sends a block, giving the girl an attack. But Shun is no dummy, my friends, he is a genius. In fact, his ball was that torn one, the bell was inside this fake coat. Maneki was late in his movements. And the ball went towards the basket. Unfortunately for everyone, it hit the basket and fell outside. Amaya emerged from beyond their cat's head, hung in the basket, and sent the bell in. Ending the game in style. This little guy is a psychopath at their school, who, who is always beating and bullying various students. Everyone would have been saved in Maneki Neko's game if it weren't for Amaya killing the other participants with his sword. He does it for the sheer pleasure of killing. Anyway, the second challenge was complete. The giant cat begins to release a sleeping gas from its mouth, which causes the remaining students to go into a deep sleep. We then discover that the students are in giant cubes that float above large cities around the world. In one of the cubes that is flying over the city of Tokyo, Shun Takahata wakes up confused and finds Takase, an old schoolmate he studied together with, but who was transferred a few years ago. Joining them in this room are Taira and Tauka, other students who also managed to survive the first two games at their high school. Noticing the last names of the people there, Shun notices that they all begin with the letter T and assumes that in the place where they are, there are several rooms and in each of them the young people are separated by alphabetical order. Determined to find Ichika, Shun tries to open the door of the room so he can get out of there, but as expected, it is locked. After a few seconds of trying to communicate with someone outside, Tyra, who is an extremely arrogant and smug super genius, says that it won't do any good and that they should just wait until the next game starts, which doesn't take long to happen. Just as Tyra finishes speaking, Someone starts knocking on the door which opens by itself, allowing four giant kokeshi, which are a type of traditional Japanese armless doll made of wood, to enter. Upon entering, the totems invite Tyra to play, and overflowing with self-confidence, the boy agrees to participate. The dolls begin to tell the rules of the challenge, called Kagome Kagome. In Japanese folklore, this game works like this. A person is chosen as the oni and sits down blindfolded, after which the spirits put their hands together and begin to walk in circles around the oni while singing a song. When the music stops, the person sitting down has 10 seconds to guess who is behind him, and if he is correct, the spirit behind him becomes the oni, but if he is wrong, he is brutally beheaded. Believing that it will be easy for a super genius like him, Tyra puts on blindfolds and sits down on the floor very excited, starting the game. As soon as the Kokeshis finish the song, the boy who was extremely confident before is now nervous and because of this he makes a mistake when trying to guess who is behind him, but he doesn't have time to complain. One of the dolls opens its eyes and throws a beam of light on the boy's forehead, taking control of his body like a marionette and making him hit his head on the ground until it crushes his skull completely. 
After the boy's failure, the dolls decide that the next to play is Tauka, who at first refuses to participate, but after finding out that if she does not participate she will die anyway, the girl decides to at least try her luck. As soon as the totems start chanting, the girl is also extremely nervous and thanks to her fear of making a mistake, she takes too long to answer and is disqualified because there is no time left. Afraid of dying, Tauka tries to flee, but is surrounded by the Kokeshis, who shoot a beam of light into her forehead, but this time each one of the totems pulls the girl's body to one side, dismembering her body. After eliminating yet another contestant, the demented dolls invite Takase to play. To spare her friend who is in a panic, Shun asks to go instead. As the boy sits down and puts on the blindfolds, the totems begin to sing, starting the challenge. Here Shun has a brilliant idea, realizing that in the previous two rounds, after the 10 seconds had passed, it was the same Kokeshi who announced the end of time, the boy had memorized the positions of the dolls and so, all he had to do was wait for the totem to announce that time was running out and the young man would know the position of all of them, and that is exactly what he did. When the puppets finish singing, Shun pretends to be desperate and when the Kokeshi announces that the 10 seconds have passed, he remembers his positions and says the name of the totem that was behind him, winning the game. After overcoming the challenge, the dolls turn to dust and in their place a key appears. With no more obstacles, Shun and Takase take the object and leave the room, but as soon as they pass through the door they find another Kokeshi in the hallway chasing a student who also has a key, but this totem is much easier to get rid of. With this, they now have two keys. As the young ones walk through the labyrinth like corridors, they hear a scream and start running in the direction of the sound to try to help. As they get closer, Shun realizes that it was Ichika who was being chased by the needy Kokeshi and throws himself towards the girl to hold her hand, saving her from the endemic totem. In the next hallway, Two other students find a giant wooden head that came out of the wall, with a three-minute counter on its forehead and seven locks to put the keys in. Hearing the noise, the group rushes over, where they find the duo who also had two keys, and adding up with their own gives a total of four, that means three keys are still to be found in just over two minutes. The group despairs believing that they will not be able to find the missing keys in time, but at that moment Amaya arrives throwing the three keys and bringing with him another student that he kills as soon as he reaches the group, the psychopath was just using him as a shield not to be caught by Kokeshi. This guy is a real monster. Seeing that Amaya is an assassin, at first the other students refuse to join him, but with only a few seconds left and no options, they are forced to accept his company. With only 12 seconds left, the youngsters put the seven keys in their respective places, and thus manage to pass the phase. The youngsters change clothes and enter the hole in the wall left by the giant head. Upon reaching the other side, the students are faced with a place filled with ice and snow on all sides. While they are watching the scenery, an earthquake starts to occur that makes the ground shake and a few seconds later, a giant wooden polar bear arrives putting on a real show with his snowboarding maneuvers. He starts to explain the rules of this game, which is really only one, don't lie. The white bear will ask some questions, and to survive, all that is needed is for everyone to answer with the truth. If any of them lie, the group must choose who they think is the liar to be eliminated, and once all the questions are asked, they move on to the next challenge. With all the rules explained, the bear asks his first question, what is your favorite food? After they are relieved that it is an easy question, the group thinks for a while and after a few seconds each gives their answer. After they all answer, the polar bear starts sniffing and sniffing the smell of the lie in the air, as they have broken the only rule of the game, they now have two minutes to point out who they believe is the liar. After a minute full of accusations, some people in the group end up pointing at the boy that Shun and Takase helped in the previous challenge, because his favorite food was parsley and for them it is unusual for someone to like a plant so much. With the liar chosen, the white bear then crushes the boy with the palm of its hand, turning his body into a mashed potato, and then asks its next question. The question this time is, do you like Shun? Another very easy question. Here Amaya's psycho says he likes the protagonist, and the same thing for Ichika and Takase, who declare their love for him. With everyone having already given their answers, the bear asks Takahata himself to answer, but the boy says he never liked himself. With all the answers, the wooden beast starts sniffing around and comes to the conclusion that once again one of them is lying. Ichika automatically accuses Amaya of being the liar, because earlier during the cat game he tried to kill them and while they are arguing, Shun begins to wonder why anyone would lie knowing that if they told the truth they would be saved. At this point, the bear says that he has finally realized and then explains that among them is one of his companions posing as a human and lying, so that they start fighting among themselves and eliminate each other until there is no one left. Hearing this, the pair of students from another school come to the conclusion that the imposter could only be Takase, since the two studied together and Shun, Ichika and Amaya went to the same school, 
so they all knew each other well and arrived there together, except for her. Ichika and Shun even try to defend their friend, but Amaya and the other two boys vote for her with only a few seconds left. Before she dies, Takase says that she didn't lie and really loves Shun, but her body is completely crushed as soon as she finishes declaring herself, leaving only a heap of hair and blood. When the bear is about to ask his next question, Shun interrupts him saying that he has already figured out who the traitor is among them. It turns out that the liar all this time was actually the bear, but how did he figure this out? Well, when he killed Takase, the girl's blood that remained on his hand removed the white paint from his fist, revealing that the animal was not a polar bear, but a black bear, which made things easier. Knowing that he lied about being an arctic bear, it becomes obvious that he is the liar, who made them believe that there was a traitor among them and saying that someone was lying, angry that they have discovered his secret. The black bear begins to attack them and reveals his true form, but during the attacks he shatters the ice on the ground and ends up trapped in a geyser, being slowly roasted by the scalding steam. Having won one more challenge, the five remaining students walk to the site of the next game, where they are met by some Russian dolls who explain the rules of what will be the last challenge, called, Kick the Can. The name is pretty self-explanatory, but let's get to the rules. In this game we have an Akuma, which means demon. He has to take the can that is in a hard-to-reach place and place it in the middle of the circle on the ground, and in the meantime, the rest of the students have to find a hiding place where they have to stay until sunset or until they are found by Akuma, who can only look for them after he places the can in the center of the circle. As soon as he sees someone's face, the demon will have to shout the person's name and then run to step on the can, by doing so he captures the participant, who will be locked in a cell until the end of the game, but the inmates can still be saved if someone kicks the can, as soon as someone kicks the object, all captives are free and the game is over, with the defeat of Akuma. But according to the dolls, the object has some kind of explosive, which will be triggered as soon as it is kicked, which means that by kicking the can to save the prisoners and win the game, the participant who does so will lose his or her life. In short, the goal of the hidden participants is to kick the can before everyone is caught, while the demon's goal is to capture at least three people before sunset. With all the rules explained, the dolls do a straw draw and the person chosen to be Akuma was the Psycho Amaya. If that's not bad luck, I don't know what is. Once the game starts, the participants begin to hide believing that Akuma will take a certain amount of time to reach the can, but he kicks one of the Russian dolls into the object, knocking it over in a few seconds and starting the search. In a very short time Amaya manages to find the two students who even try to resist and fight, but after being beaten, they are captured and taken to the cell. As Amaya steps on the can, he ends up seeing Ichika watching him, discovers their location. Determined to catch the couple, the young man runs to where they are hiding. Knowing that it won't be long before Akuma gets to them and finishes the game, Shun ties a rope to a heavy object and starts to climb down while calling Ichika, but instead of going with him, the girl decides to try to hold the door to prevent Amaya from reaching them, but she can't make it in time and is found very easily. After escaping, Shun finds a new hiding place, where he finds medieval armor and decides to use it to his advantage. When the sun is about to set, the young man comes out of his hiding place wearing the armor to cover his body, but the problem is that the equipment is extremely heavy and limits his movements. Nevertheless, Shun appears in front of Amaya and after dropping his sword, he tries to run away, but is cornered near the edge. Since he could only arrest someone after seeing his face, Amaya goes extremely confidently to Takahata and takes off his helmet while mocking his plan. After seeing the boy's face, Amaya walks over to the can to step in and finish the game, but halfway there, he notices that there is something on his hip, a chain. Here Shun is once again proving to be quite clever, as his opponent approaches to take off his helmet, he fastens it to his armor with a steel chain, preventing him from reaching the can. To save time, Takahata throws himself off the edge towards the sea, dragging with him Amaya who has to make a great effort not to fall into the ocean. As soon as he falls into the water, Shun removes his armor and starts climbing the wall to get back to the game site and kick the can. Amaya still has to pull all that weight until he can finally do something to stop him. By the time he finishes climbing, Shun is very tired and even with great difficulty runs to the can. At that very moment, Amaya finally finishes pulling the armor off and after getting loose also runs towards the object. Takahata reaches the can first and to save his friends, decides to sacrifice himself by kicking the object, which flies away, but does not explode. As the sun sets, the Russian dolls appear and say that the game is over, with Shun being the champion. But why didn't the can explode? Basically because the dolls lied, according to them, they only said that to make the game more exciting. As the game ends, Amaya is revolted by the defeat thinking that he will die. But the demented dolls say that it was just a game and that no one will die. As a reward for having come so far in the challenges, 
Each of the young people receives a popsicle that they must consume in order to get out of there. While eating, Shun talks to Ichika and makes many plans with her, but unfortunately they won't be able to accomplish, because the real last challenge was that popsicle, a lucky challenge. It turns out that on the wood stick was the fate of the students, if on the wood stick is written, you live, that person will survive and if it is written, you die, well, you can imagine what happens. When looking at his stick, Shun finds written, you live, and tells Ichika that despite everything he is lucky, but he doesn't have time to celebrate, when looking at the girl's stick, it is possible to see written, you die. At the end of it all, the only survivors of this truly deadly game were Shun and Amaya. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.